Hello everybody, my name is Alex Goddard and welcome everyone to my channel once again for another Doctor Who video and today it's a very special and personal video because today we're going to be combining two of my favourite passions in the world, my passion for Doctor Who obviously and my passion for food. I am a chef, I'm a fully qualified trained chef and I cook food on a day-to-day -day basis and it's pretty much the whole passion of my job. I love cooking food, I love eating food, but in Doctor Who, I love food references. I absolutely love food references in Doctor Who. They're so funny, they're so eye-catching, they add a little bit of humour, which is not necessarily the best bit but they also add some relatively good bits in terms of plot development and story development as well. They're obviously seen as a good gesture, but in some cases, they can be used as a weapon. And so, yes, today we're going to be going through some of my favourite food references from Doctor Who. These are going to be in no particular order. I'm just going to name some of my favourite and some of the most iconic Doctor Who food references and maybe there'll be one or two surprises that you might actually not think this will be in this list but it will be though so definitely stay tuned in this video make sure you like this video and please comment down below any of your favorite food references that you might have throughout Doctor Who and so I want to start off this video by saying this if you can't stand the heat get out of the kitchen too many cooks will spoil the broth whoever spills the milk first will cry Let's get it on, shall we? And so we start off with possibly the most weirdest food combination of all time in Doctor Who history. Fish fingers and custard. Yes, yes, I know. Whatever you do, people, do not ever try fish fingers and custard. It just doesn't work. I've done it before. It doesn't work. What you can do if you want to taste fish fingers and custard for real, don't actually do it with actual fish fingers. Do it with cake that looks like fish fingers and then it will work, but never ever do fish fingers and custard. It's silly, it's ridiculous. But Matt Smith made it real. Matt Smith made it like it was a piece of cake. I mean, in the 11th hour, we saw the scenes of him not liking bacon, not liking beans, not liking bread and butter, not liking yogurt or apples. So in that complete story, you saw a lot of the dislikes and likes of his taste buds as the Doctor. And that kind of personifies him as the Doctor. He's quite cool with his bow tie, but he's also quite wacky, quite bonkers, and quite mad and weird. Like a weird combination like fish fingers and custard. You would never ever think that would go together in a million years. But Matt Smith made it work as his Doctor. And in a way, it kind of personifies him as the Doctor. So yes, that's fish fingers and custard. I know, really, do not try it, because it really doesn't work. But I dare you to do it. I mean, I'm not forcing you to do it, but if you want to do it, be my guest. But I've done it before, and trust me, people, it doesn't work. It's silly. It's, it, it, it's ridiculous, people. But anyway, we're going to be moving on to an unusual one. This is one that I found quite recently. I had to add a Pizza Capaldi food reference. Now... He hasn't been munching on any sort of food lately. I mean, you could say that the Satsuma or the Tangerine in Last Christmas was a food reference. Yes, but he doesn't necessarily like them. But one of the foods that I do picked up that I recognised, and he did eat one particular food in the World Enough and Time finale, crisps. Yes. In the first scene of World Enough and Time, you saw the Doctor in his TARDIS, lying on his chair, eating a packet of crisps. It's so funny. I had to include it in this list because, as my favourite Doctor is Peter Capaldi, I had to include a food reference somewhere. But he rarely eats any food in his series, apart from the one time where he mentions a thought a century to Birmingham for a packet of crisps to Nardole in Oxygen, and then eats a packet of crisps in World Enough and Time, and also eats fish and chips as well with Bill as she serves chips in series 10. And so yes, um, 
that one's a weird one for me. Again, if you're watching this from the US, any potato chips are available if you don't have crisps in your uh, country. Apologies if I may offended anyone. But yeah, the uh, the crisps was a really funny one because he was eating them as he was watching Missy, Nardo and Bill explore and investigate an abandoned ship. And he was like watching them. It's like, oh, are you eating crisps? No, no, no. I said, don't watch me eating crisps. <laughs> I found that so funny and so hilarious to watch. I mean, the doctor obviously gets distracted by eating some crisps instead of watching what they're actually doing. It's just simple enough. Peter Capaldi likes to distract himself, and I think with crisps, it's the only way to do it. <laughs> now, let's move on to the classic series with our first Classic Who food reference. Stick of celery on the fifth doctor's jacket. Obviously, the most iconic vegetable in the entire of Doctor Who's history. I mean... Peter Davison doesn't like celery, let's say that. Peter Davison doesn't like celery. But, in a way, it does have a significant reference to save his life. And this is the reason why I'm not naming food references just because they're funny or like they're a really good gesture. Sometimes food references can act as an extra bonus to a story. And within this particular um, food reference as the celery it actually helps him out in a way like it turns purple when it's on like some kind of planet with like some weird gas I can't remember what episode it was please tell me if you know it but also it does help him in a way to save his own life so you could say that the celery acts more as like a second helper in a way to the doctor's aid and I think that's really good having like that kind of reference as the celery, obviously he eats the celery and spits it out because he hates celery. But really, it's such a very, an, an iconic vegetable. I mean, when I was watching Time Crash, that little mini episode uh, with David Tennant and Peter Davison, it's like, oh, sick of celery, brave choice. I mean, not only everyone can go with a brave choice of piece of celery or a different vegetable. And um, yeah, like, like, oh, look, I'm the doctor. I can save the universe with a, some tape and some string. And look at me, I'm wearing a vegetable. <laughs> oh God, yeah. I mean, really, it does save the doctor's life in the end. And it's such a very iconic thing to have on his body because without the stick of celery, he wouldn't be the fifth doctor. Let's be honest with you. And so, yes, let's move on to the next one, which we've got... One of not everyone's favourite companions, Clark Oswald, or as I should call Oswald with the word souffle, souffle girl. We're going to go with souffles. Now, I think souffles is a very, very technical dessert. It's one of the things that is so, so hard as a chef to get right because it's on many, many different levels. You have to get the complete air into the souffle to make it rise without using, you know, wasting a lot of like gestures on beating it, removing all of the air out, trying to keep in as much air as possible. Yes, I'm talking in chef food terms, deal with it, okay? <laughs> I can't believe I'm actually talking in chef terms, really. It's so weird. <laughs> But I do talk about food on a day-to-day -day basis, so I can't really um, argue with that. But yeah, the uh, the souffle one is a very, very great uh, way to give Clara a bit of backstory. Because the whole episode in the Salem of the Daleks, where did you get the milk and the eggs from? It was all a dream in the um, Salem of the Daleks episode. And then when it came to the Bells of St. John, when... The doctor realised that he likes to make souffles and then, you know, the doctor got, you know, realised that this could be the same girl who likes to make souffles. And the souffle kind of had a real good interconnecting link throughout the whole series of series of series seven. And I thought it was a really good reference. I mean, obviously, when you try and make souffles, you need to serve them immediately. Otherwise, and keep an eye on them because they do burn really easily. Unfortunately, Oswald in some of the Daleks didn't do that and she ended up burning pretty much all of her other souffles. So, yes, got to keep your eye on your souffles, that's for sure. And so, next up, our other food reference. We're going to go with one that I picked up a long time ago. This is a classic Who food reference that you might have not picked up on, but I watched it and I now realise that... Sometimes in Doctor Who, you can have food gestures that are, you know, food references that act as a good gesture, like a sense of friendship or a sense of helping. But sometimes food references and some particular foods can act as a really evil weapon, like sugar in the moon base. Now, the moon base is one example that I'll give because the sugar 
was infected by the Cybermen in that particular episode. They contaminated the food supply of the sugar, which not everyone always takes sugar, but it's one of the most likely food sources that everyone surely is going to take because you need sugar in pretty much everything to give yourself energy. But pretty much, they decided to contaminate that particular sugar. So when people decided to take it, they'd get infected with a virus, which will obviously control their minds. And it was such of a unique way as such of a, a compromising weapon to use in that particular story, the moon base, which is one of my favorite Sandman stories of all time. And I personally think that contaminating a food supply like sugar is always a deadly, deadly thing to use. And I know about food contamination as a chef, and we always try and avoid cross-contamination completely without crossing over many to germs or bacteria. But the sugar contamination in the moon base was definitely one I felt, oh, now they contaminate people with this deadly virus in the sugar, which not everyone should take, but the majority of the people who do take sugar will get infected by the sugar and by this really um, weird virus that the Simon have inflicted on the crew on the moon base. So yeah, I think that one is a very interesting one. It's just for weird food reference, but yet it can act as a villain or, or as a weapon in a particular story like the moon base. And so yes, let's move on to our next one, which we've got, just having a little look at my list. Ah oh, yeah, that's it. Bananas. Who doesn't love a good banana? I, don't, I know Christopher Elkiston does, and also David Tennant does. Always bring a banana to a party. Bananas are good, aren't they? <laughs> that reference, though, is absolutely so iconic. I think when I, um, when I was five watching um, The Empty Child Under Dr. Dances, um, I was like saying to my mum and dad, Bananas? Bananas are good, son. They're good for you. They're one of your five a day. And I think... For the Doctor to reference that particular fruit and to give it such of a, a unique sense of fun and excitement and such of a humorous gesture. I mean like, you know, b bananas are good sense of potassium and like he was doing it in like, you know, using the banana as a gun. It's a good source of potassium. And um, yeah, I think the banana one is definitely so funny and so it gives children these days a little bit of information about the banana that it's good for you you should definitely eat it's one of your five a day but yeah it's so 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 funny to use i mean christopher elkston i remember him just saying like there's a banana grove that grows there i like bananas bananas are good as always <laughs> that's one that i definitely loved a bit and i can go back to either the, the doctor dances or the girl in the fireplace and i can just keep on watching that um, phrase always bring a banana to a party rose bananas are good aren't they and I just really, it's one of the most funniest uh, food references that you'll ever see. And probably the only one that is superior than all the rest, which we'll get on to finally. But I'm going to move on to quite a recent one, the custard creams. Now, this happened in the ghost monument when the doctor was reunited with her TARDIS. And she saw her TARDIS for the first time. And when she was about to take off for the first time, she saw a custard cream dispenser. And I've got to say, I would love to have a custard cream dispenser in my room. I'd honestly love to bits. I'm a big fan of custard creams. Some people prefer bourbons, that's fine. But as a custard cream lover, I always love custard creams. And to have that food reference in that particular episode, I thought as a neat little gesture, as a custard cream dispenser in the TARDIS, I can't really argue anything. If I was in that TARDIS and I pulled the lever down and the custard cream just fell down, through a little shaft, and I picked it up, I'd be like, I've just been quiffed. It's like the advert, it's like that one guy, you know, picks up a falling glass and he's like, he's staring at it like, this is the most amazing and the most ultimate custard cream I've seen in my life. I'll treasure it forever. It's like, honestly, I love custard, custard creams to bits, and to see that particular reference with Jodie Whittaker's Doctor, I thought, well, now that we can see that Jodie Whittaker loves custard creams, honestly, it's... I know I was trying to think about, in this particular video, a food reference for every single Doctor. But sometimes, not every single food reference link up with each Doctor very well, because it needs to be a reference that they can really personify as their Doctor. But yes, the only food reference that is superior from every other food reference there is in Doctor Who history... Would you like a jelly baby? 
Obviously, the Jelly Baby is the king of all food references in Doctor Who history. It is known as a sign of friendship, a sign of a good gesture, but also adds some really good humour, but also can be used as a really deadly weapon. Now drop your weapons, or I'll kill him with this deadly Jelly Baby. I know seriously, sometimes I watch Tom Baker give out Jelly Babies when he's in a really angry mood, like, take this Jelly Baby, or I'll kill him with it. But then there's sometimes where he's just really, a, when he's really being sort of a sarcastic clown, he's being a fool, he's being a selfish and really irritating, um, funny person, and yet he can just really lighten up the whole situation. Anyone wants a jelly baby? And like, would you like a jelly baby? And then, and then I think it was this one scene in Robots of Death when um, he reaches into his pocket with his bag of jelly babies, eats one, and then says, which are like a jelly baby. Shut up! I like you, only a simple yes or no would be sufficient. And then you eat, continue eating it. It's so funny and so hilarious. Even the second doctor does it. Even the eighth doctor does it. And I think maybe the tenth doctor would have done it. I don't know really. But honestly, the jelly baby is possibly the king of all food references. And I think everybody could not even deny a jelly baby, even if they were asked to. Because it's like a sense of friendship. It's like a sense of a great gesture towards somebody else. Like, would you like a jelly baby? And they can't really say no, because that's like saying, I don't like Doctor Who. I don't like jelly babies. Leave me alone. It's like, you hate jelly babies. I'm going to unfriend you for life. Like, seriously, if somebody ignores or doesn't accept a jelly baby, they are not a fan of Doctor Who. Simple as that. You can unfriend them for good if they don't like jelly babies. That's, you can take my word from them. <laughs> but yeah, seriously though, guys, if you have any more food references that I've missed or I've missed on my list, then please make sure you comment them down below. Don't forget to like this video, share and subscribe for more Doctor Who content. Thanks so much everyone for watching and until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon in the next video. Goodbye everyone, see you soon.